rise up. To Psalm 8 and read the word of God together. Glory be to God in the highest. Psalm number 8 from verse 1 to 9. Are we there now? Are we all there? Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's read Psalm 8 from verse 1 to the end. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babies and nursing infants, you have ordained strength, because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion, over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. Can we open our mouth this morning? and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's begin to appreciate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let's thank him for the gift of life. Jesus is the giver of life. Let's bless him for being alive today. Let's appreciate him for looking after us. Let's thank him for his provision. Let's thank him for his love. Bless his name for graces he has released upon you. Magnify him this morning and begin to praise the Lord. Visit me afresh. Visit me. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of God, there are pleasures forevermore. Say, Lord, visit me. Visit me this morning. Visit me. Visit me. Speak to me. Touch me. Review yourself to me. Review your word. Review yourself to me. Instruct me. And let your name alone be glorified to this service and forevermore. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Abba Father, we bless your holy name. We just want to say thank you for all your goodness. We say thank you. Please be glorified here this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we start to this service, let your spirit and your power take preeminence in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, King of Glory. You, I open today's service in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. And today's service is declared miracle service in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Put your hands together for Jesus as we go into praise and worship. Amen. today we begin to give God the praise and the worship that he deserves today. 
for today is another amazing day another amazing week that he has kept all of us here safe sound healthy and mighty and we cannot be here to give him the worship in his presence without him
blessed us, all the ways in which he's kept us. I want us to be thankful as we stand here today and to prepare to praise his name.
of salt, some thirty, a book of some thirty, and we we'll read from one to five. Psalm 30, from 1 to verse 5. Are we all there? Let's read together. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the dead and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his, praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, my Lord. Oh, I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. For you have done so much for me. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. grateful this morning. I want us all to say, Father, thank you. Thank you for lifting me out of the dead. Thank you for saving me from going down. Shall we give thanks? Wow. Our Father and our God, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus, for lifting us. For your many, many benefits. For your goodness. For your favor. Thank you for lifting us out of the dead. Thank you for saving us. Father, we praise you. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. We have come with grateful hearts. And we are saying thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks. Amen. And I want us to sing again. Please beat the drum for us. I want you to dance. Dance like you mean it. Dance is an offering. A sweet smelling offering. Singing is an offering. That is the only thing that God takes. That he accepts. That eats. That God dwells in. Amen. Amen. Joy overflow. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows. Joy overflows. Oh! 
We are going to thank God again. Yes. We are not only to uh, make supplications on behalf of others. Have we learned to thank God for people? This week we are two people celebrating their birthdays. Let's praise God for them. Hallelujah. Let's thank God that evil has not before them. And we are not gathering here crying on their behalf. Thank you, but we have come to say, Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for keeping them. Thank you for sparing their lives. Thank you for keeping them in great mind and in great health. Shall we give thanks? Wow. Our Father and our God, we have come to say thank you. We praise you, Lord, for those celebrating their birthday this week. Thank you because, Lord, you have looked after them. Thank you because you have kept them. Thank you because we are here to give you thanks on their behalf. Thank you because we are not crying over them. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for sparing them. Thank you for keeping them in great minds. Thank you for keeping them in great shapes and in great body. We praise you, Holy Spirit. Be thou exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. We don't have much time, but we'll pray on verse 5 of Psalm 30. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Let's call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and say, Father, let my morning of joy come. Amen. You know why you weep. You know what terrifies you. You know what makes you lay on your pillow and wet your pillow with, with tears. But today we are calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says those who call upon that name, they shall be saved. Let's call upon Jesus and say, Father, turn my weeping into joy. Amen. Let my morning of joy come. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we look to you. Father, turn my weeping into joy. In the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we pray. Everyone who weeps here today, everyone who weeps in secret, everyone who lays on their bed and wets their pillows with their tears, Father, we lift all to you today and we pray that you will turn those weeping into joy, that you will turn those tears into testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, turn my weeping to joy. Let my morning of rejoicing come. Let my morning of thanksgiving come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, I think it's verse 10. Verse 10 says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. The Bible has not said that suffering will endure for life. So let's call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and say, Father, put an end to my suffering. Amen. Put an end to my weeping. Put an end to everything that does not give me joy. Shall we pray? Father, Father in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Our Father and our God, we pray today that you put an end to every weeping, every suffering in the name of Jesus. Everything that disturbs and takes away our joy, Jehovah, we pray that you will put an end to them in the name of Jesus. By your own mercy, Lord, we pray that you will establish us and make us strong, make us steadfast in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and pray for our children and young people that the Lord will give them health Amen. in body and in mind. Amen. Let's pray specifically for those writing exams that the Lord will continually to teach them Amen. and guide them and give them his wisdom. Shall we pray? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, our Father and our God, because it is your desire that we have health and health in abundance. So Lord, we pray for our young children. We pray for our young people and our children that they shall be healthy in body and in mind in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we pray that our children shall be strong physically and mentally in the name of Jesus. Every young person that may be going through one thing or another that troubles them, Father, we bring them to you, we lift them to you, and we pray that you will touch them today in the name of Jesus. Let them know that you are near. Let them know that you are here. Let them know that you are here to help them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. For in Jesus' 
Mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father and our God, we give you all the glory. We glorify you because you are awesome. Thank you because you are wonderful. You do wonders. And Lord, every prayer we have prayed, we pray. Lord, that there shall be answers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every supplications, every silent request, every weeping of hearts, Father, that have been brought to you today, Father, we pray that they shall become testimonies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's put your hand together for Jesus. Let's have our seat. God bless you all. Amen. I welcome you all to the presence of God. So be quiet today. Is it our fasting? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is fasting, right? Yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All our prayers shall be answered in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you want to testify to the goodness of God, I want you to prepare yourself after this announcement. Then you can come and testify. Then we'll listen to the word of God after that. Hallelujah. Amen. As we know, our 14 days prayer and fasting will end on Tuesday. So we have today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. It is where the Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Next Sunday is Father's Day. Woo! Let all fathers say, Woo! Incoming father, father in waiting. Say, whoo! <laughs> Come on, boys. Say, whoo! It's going to happen very soon. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It will be a what do you think? It will happen. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're checking me out. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, let me say this. For those who are here early this morning, you saw what happened. Mm -hmm. That should continue. So, our Sunday school class, I want to see everybody for next Sunday. It's less to be here on time. All right? The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. And while I was praying in the night, I perceive many of us, we are yet to be baptized. So, if you want to be baptized, come and give me your name. Then the leader will meet and see how we can start a class. That should, should run down for like six weeks before the baptism. If you check your Bible very well, most churches are not doing it according to the word of God anymore. After you're giving your life to Jesus, the next step is baptism. That is when Holy Spirit will do it. God will forgive us in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you are yet to be baptized, it's nothing to be shamed about. Just come and give your name, then we will we we'll do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Choir, I would like to see you after the service. Please wait and see me. It is well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. As we know, every Tuesday, our prayer meeting, 7 p.m., both online and on-site. Friday, Bible study. Still, many of us, is online. We are not still joining. I understand if we are at work, but still, Many meetings, I do it at work, even while I'm driving. It's on Zoom. Ah, it's true. When you're at work, please don't use your phone. <laughs> you don't want to start praying again, Lord. No, I understand. I understand. But if you are not busy, please. Like I said, above every other thing is the Word of God. Don't deceive yourself. Prayer, fasting, they are all wonderful, in fact, necessary. But without the word of God, it's like you are eating, you don't drink water. You kill yourself, you have so much problem. Let's give value to the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Any testifier in the house? Let's rise up. I want us to sing for grandma. Today is her birthday. And June 12th is a special day. For my family, for the country where we came from, June 12th. Do we all know that? I realize that great people are born on this day. Amen. Mama, you shall be great in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I pray for you, many, many more grandchildren. Amen. That's our prayer. Let's sing for her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Jesus Christ. Amen. You will celebrate many more years in health in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Let's have our seat. Any testify in the house this morning? There are none. Let's bow down our heads and begin to praise the Lord. Open my heart to your word. Anytime God sends his word through his servant, it's for someone. I am sure of that. Say the word that is coming today is for me. Is my word. Bible says when the word came for Joseph, that was word for Joseph. His word bring deliverance and breakthrough. Say, Lord, send your word to me this morning. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And dear Father, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word again. We ask because your word saves the entrance into your word, give us light and understanding. Lord, give us understanding today, give us deeper revelation of who you are, Amen. that we may know you and the power of your resurrection. Amen. And that this power will be able to walk in our lives. Amen. To make us better, Amen. make us stronger, Amen. make us fit for your purpose Amen. on this earth in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. So we're going to, um, this morning, in our teaching uh, message this morning, um, and a very interesting topic. Um, the pastor said something about being baptized. And um, a bit of some of the things we're going to share this morning would be a bit, I mean, related. Um, we're Christians from purpose. I like to always lay that foundation, you know, that we're Christians, not. And it's exciting, really, at the start of school this morning, how we had to separate the difference between being the church and being born again. Um, we're not Christians because of the fact that we're born Christians or we uh, were traditionally adopted as Christians. Um, we're traditionally adopted as Christians, but like, are we, we're Christians because um, God, God has called us to be Christians. Amen. Amen. We're going to read some scriptures this morning. So I titled this morning's message, Another Spirit. Another Spirit. Or in some translation, the next spirit. Another Spirit. Another Spirit. Let's start with Romans chapter 12. Verse 2 in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Are we there? Can somebody help us read? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. All right. Now let's start with the last part of that verse. 
that we may prove that which is what? Good, acceptable, and in the perfect will of God. Now, I have studied the scriptures. I can give you three scriptures or more. Time will not permit to emphasize what the Bible means by good, acceptable, and the perfect will. But let's start with the foundation of why we are Christians. We are Christians because God called us from the world, from the darkness, and to mold for himself people who, when the others look at, they will remember that there is a God. Am I making sense? Now, people who would be like the mirrors of the identity of God, particularly when we live in a society where there is no understanding, neither is any imagination of the existence of God. So God had anticipated that there will be a dispensation where people would be people will struggle to know that there is a God that exists. And then he called out some people and said, you will have a relationship with me. And by this relationship, if anyone is struggling to understand who Jesus is, when they look at you, they will come to you and ask you, there's something different about you. Then you say, oh, it's actually Jesus. Oh, really? When they come to the next person, there's something different about you. They say, oh, what's this? Oh, it's Jesus. Oh, so there is a Jesus. Now tell us about Jesus. Why? Because the natural man or the mind of nature cannot comprehend the mind of the spirit. Am I making sense? Yes. Let me give an example. I remember so many years ago, a friend walked up to me and said, we were neighbors. And we were students together in the university. I mean, the truth really is, the guy was going to church. But what surprised me was the fact that we were hardly interacting. We're young guys who we should be talking about football or playing football or talking about, you know, then we talk about babes, you know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, you know, why do you look at me? My son, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so we're having this conversation. So you talk to me and say, Richie, there's something about you. And I've sat down so many times to observe you from a very far distance. And guess what? I figured it out. I'm going to start following you to church. That was what happened. And so he started going to church with me. And guess what? We still hardly had conversations. But that was how that guy got born again. I never had to sit down and say, oh, bro, I want to speak to you about Jesus. Have you heard about Jesus and all of that? No. He kept looking at me, and from his observation of my life, my lifestyle, my choices, everything, he chose to follow. And that really is the picture of what Christianity is. That's the picture of the essence of creating this Christianity. And it gets back to the Old Testament. When God had seen that every foundation he had laid or naturally imputed into man, you know, you know the, the thing about gadgets and factory setting. You know, at some point, when it comes from the factory, it is set to use, right? But at some point, you get so distressed, or maybe the, 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 the gadget is hanging. What do we do? We do what we call factory resetting. You reset it back to the original. When God created man, God created man in an original state. And he thought that in that original state, man already has a bit of God in him. Because that's why the Bible says he created us in his image and after what? His likeness. Like so we had an original setting that had God in us. That everything we should think, everything we should imagine, everything we should do should be about God and God alone. Am I making sense? Yes. But somewhere in Genesis chapter 6, God came and said, oh, man, this man, man, is complex. I've done everything with the original setting. So God started the factory resetting. In Noah, remember the Noah experience? It was a factory resetting. 
wipe out the entire humanity. Just preserve a family. Okay? And if I preserve this family, this family will reset the entire humanity. But in spite of that um, experiment, iniquity still then God then said, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to create a nation. And that nation became what? Israel. From the Moses as an instructor to gathering people, no, he even started from an Abraham. Abraham understanding the promise and getting the instruction, gave birth to sons and um, gave birth to Isaac. Isaac gave birth to, to Jacob and then Jacob gave birth to 12 sons. So you see how God was patient, very patient to create a country or create a set of people. And the same way God has been so patient to look at the entire world and he pulled you, 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 you. I said, come to this house. I want, when people look at you, they can see, ah, there's something about this person. I like to just be like what this person is. You know, sometimes we don't really understand how, the situation where God is looking around for people who will represent his culture, who will represent his ideas, who will represent his values. And the same situation was in the case of Samuel. Remember Samuel was a small child. And God had actually said in the days of Moses that anybody who comes through the tribe of Leviticus or Levi. So even in the whole 12 tribe of Israel, God still went to look for one tribe. That will always, 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 always think about God. Because if you know the remaining 11 tribes will still think about making money. They will think about business. So they will think about the social constructs or the social situations. They will think about the play, the games and everything. But I'm still going to just preserve this tribe called Leviticus. And then in that same tribe, he said, anybody who comes from this tribe will represent me. Where? In his house. And then one day, this man, Eli, was meant to transfer that grace to his next sons, but his sons were not available. And the Bible says something about those days. He said, in those days, there were no revelation. You know what it means? There was no church. There was no prayer. There was nothing. And what did God do? He still went again to look for another man called who? Samuel. And in a small age, God began to speak to Samuel, and Samuel picked up the battle from where Eli left it. Am I making sense to us? This all is to help us understand that God is constantly looking for you and I to always do what? To represent Him. What does it mean to represent? In the place of work. It is not about you going there and then saying, carrying Jesus on your head and saying, I'm a man of God and all of that. The things you say, the way you carry yourself, there is something so unique about you. And when you get into situations, when men are saying there's a casting down, you are saying there's a lifting up. When, you are, when men are sick and everyone is sick and people don't know what to do, but you know that you serve a living God who can get you out of the sickness. Am I making sense? Yes. When people are saying that all the financial situations of the world is negative and is shrinking me, causing frustration, you always know that there is a way out. And when you step out in a grandiose way, magnificent way, and I look at you, isn't this harshness affecting you? They're recognizing the fact that, man, there's something different about you. And that is the fact that what you have been called by God yeah. as saints in his house, and not just to worship him, but so when people look at you, they see God in you. Yeah. The Bible says, even the Bible says, that men would look at us and know that we have been with the Lord. Yeah. Men will look at our character. Men will look at the things we say. The friends we keep. The words we speak. And know that what we have been with God. Because the God factor is, in, is intact. The God experience is intact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
But let's go back to that same verse and let me read this translation, the Passion Translation. It says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. The environment where we have been placed. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit. Did you get that? Be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. I like this translation. He said, this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his way. As you live a life of beauty, a life of satisfaction, and a life of perfection as you live that life. All right? So we live a life that we empower you to descend God's way. Now, when it says in the scripture that we do not be influenced by the environment. Now, that must say, because we need to be careful. Does it mean we shouldn't go to school? Oh, no, 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 we have to go to school. But we have to go to school. That's the basic. Now, let me put up the school. When God created the original setting of man, those settings became the principles of life. Right? The principles of life. The principles of you have to wake up every morning, right? The principles of you have to be respectful, right? The principles of what else? You have to you have to even consider that there's so there's a power beyond your power. Right? Because it is because there's something bigger than you that you seek for what is bigger. You seek to know what is bigger than you. So the reason why we seek for knowledge is because there's something that we don't know. And oftentimes, those things that we don't know have that chance to be bigger than us. Right? You know how to sort out your finances because you went to school and you read that there are financial principles for being successful. Yes or no? Yes. Otherwise, we squander, we squander every money that comes in. But we have learned through education that you have to save, right? Yes. We have learned through education that you have to invest. We have even learned through education that there's what they call innovation. That you create ideas. And when you create ideas, we've also learned that ideas rule the world, right? These are basic principles. But the thing and the privilege of being a child of God is that beyond those principles, there is a grace. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. The principle about academic success is you must read. If you don't read, how will you pass? That's the principle. And that's where the whole world has sunk to. The principle. But there is a grace that even after you have read and you pray, as you are stepping into the exam hall, everything that is set in the exam is what God is going to show you. Sometimes it comes to people in dreams. Sometimes it is actually in when you're refreshing, you just found that the revisions you had before the paper were actually the, the thing that happened. And you can't explain how and why you chose to go make the revisions in those particular areas. That's where grace comes in. There's grace even when you are the two. There are two people who are qualified for promotion. But why did they pick you? Because of grace. You have both done everything that meets for principles. Right? But grace found you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's what Paul is saying here. That if we live only by the principles, and we just stay by the principles, there is no differentiation. We will only just be those that will be sent to be coming to church. But there is no differentiation. The real essence of our Christianity is beyond coming to church. Am I making sense? Yeah. Can I say it again? Yeah. The real essence of our Christianity is beyond coming to church. Otherwise, God can raise animals to serve him. Hasn't he said it in his word? Yeah. He said, I can raise stones to worship him. So if we think that we're doing God a favor to come to church on the Sunday morning, we are getting it wrong. Do I remind you 
that when Job, remember in Job, he even said that even the devil came to worship. <laughs> you remember? Even the devil comes to say, God, oh, I throw a salute. I know you are God. I'm here. I just came to throw a salute to you. To just recognize that, yes, I know you are God. I know I offended you and you threw me out. And I'm doing my own wrongs and scattering the whole world. But I recognize that uh, you are powerful. When I just said I should come and that's what happened. And God was bragging. I said, oh, I will show you. Can you see my son? Job. Job will shall shine you on it. Job will do, go and try Job. You can, Job will never follow you. No matter what you do to Job, Job will not follow you. Then we said, uh, God, is because of the grace. Take the grace away and I will show you that Job will no longer follow you. That's what happened. Right. You no, know, sometimes this Bible, eh, because of the King James Version and all of those versions, they may look a bit complex, but it's as simple as this kind of conversation. Yeah. They said, oh yeah, let's try Job. Then they will say, okay, let's try. God said, oh yeah, he knows they say, come better. <laughs> let's bet. Let's try. That was actually what happened. He was a brag. And the brag was, okay, what did they do? Took his children. Took everything around him. Job still said, as far as I'm concerned, there's still God. And it's only God I'm going to serve. The devil did everything. But the guy was still convinced. Starts to, now imagine in those days when he was going through the trauma. Remember he also had three friends. That kept saying, ah, the wicked boy. He's the wicked, he's karma that has come on you. But even with all of that, he was convinced. And he said, I'm persuaded. I'm convinced. That there is a God. He is a faithful God. Even if I go through the worst situations, God will still keep me. Imagine Job in our today going through all of these things. Some of us, if we were in Job's situation, would have given up. Oh, there's no God. Where was God when I went through this situation? No, God does not exist. But in his steadfastness, and faithfulness, what happened at the end of the day? God restored everything that he lost. So the scripture here again says, be transformed by the Holy Spirit to give a total reformation of how you think, a total reformation of how you think, so you can discern the real intent is so we can discern God's will and we can live a life that gets to perfection. Now let's see a practical example. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Very practical example. Numbers chapter 13, from verse 17. So I'm going to read. It's actually a story of what happened. I'm going to use the story to just cut this conversation. Moses sent them, Numbers 13 from verse 17. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up into the hill, I mean into Negev, and go up into the hill country and see what the land is and whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, whether they are few or many, and whether the land that they dwell is in in is good or bad. And whether the cities that they dwell in are camps or strongholds. And whether the land is rich or poor. And whether there are trees in it or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit, fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. 
So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob near Lebo Hamad. They went up into the Negev and came to Hebron, Ahima, and so many other places. Let's save time. Let's then just, just jump to verse 25. Verse 25, at the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. That at the end of 40 days, they are taking 40 days to spy the entire land. And they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Parah at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They told him, we came to the land to which you sent us. Now, it flows with what? Milk and honey. And this is its fruit. So here is a sample of the fruit. However, now this is the point I want us to note. However, the Lord who dwell in the land, sorry, the people who dwell in the land has strong, and the city is air fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Hmm, not that, the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the hill country, and the Canaanites. Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. Now watch this. Watch verse 30. Interesting bit. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go all up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out. Now let's jump to verse chapter 14. Chapter 14. Let's go to chapter 14. Verse 24. Now remember, before we do this, before we do chapter 14 verse 24, let's reframe the story or refresh the story. The Israelites really had left Egypt. You remember that? They went through the Red Sea. They had spent some days, about about 20 something days, you know, having left the uh, Egypt. Now, note that even as the Bible has described the experience in the New Testament, we came to realize that there is actually a highway path from Egypt to Israel that will just take within 11 days. Right? 11 days. It will take no obstructions, no hindrance, no whatever it will take 11 days. But God thought that the highway path of moving from Egypt to Israel would actually even exterminate these people because the resistance will be so much that they will not be able to bear the reactions, right? So God felt, no, let, let me not allow these guys to take 11 days. So it took them through a different path, which would take more than 11 days to get to the land. Now, remember that the land where they were going was actually that which he had promised Abraham. Do you remember? He had promised Abraham. In fact, because these were migrants, as some of us are, God had even said to the forefathers of the Israelites at different times that this land called the Canaan, I'm going to give it to you. I have already made that promise to your father or your grandfather or your forefather Abraham. And I'm going to ensure that this comes to pass. He said that to Isaac to continually say that the promise I have given to you, I will bring it to pass. How many of us have been in the place where God has given you a promise that he will certainly do certain things? But a number of times, we'll always have to go back to him to pray about those things and he reminds us of those promises. Can I get an amen? Amen. So we have been in those situations where, oh yeah, he did say to us last year, 
that he will give us perfect help. But sometimes in the beginning of this year, you began to feel some form of sickness and it got you worried. And you go back to principle. But remember, I told you last year that I'm going to still give you these blessings. And the same thing. Because he did say to Isaac again and again that I will give you the land of the Canaan. He did say to Joseph, I mean to Jacob again and again. Remember, Jacob ran away from the land, and when Jacob slept, thinking he was going to be killed or something, he said, This land, which incidentally was the same land that God has spoken to Abraham about, he said, I'm still going to give you this land. So at different stages of our life, God keeps reminding us of his promises over our lives. He's a faithful God, right? A God that is faithful will always and always and always remind us of his promise. And so at this point, God said, this is about the time for you to move into that promise that I have given to you. You know, they've, they've, they've escaped a lot of experience, a lot of situations, and this was the moment to get into that promised land. This is the moment to get into that blessing land. A promised land is a blessing land. It is a land that is filled with the blessings that God has proposed for us. Let me break it down. What is promise? If I promise you 50 pounds, right? That means you already believe that you're going to be 50 pounds richer at some point. Yes or no? Now that is only if you don't trust <laughs> the promise. Or where the source of the promise is. Now, okay, if my, son, if my daughter promises 50 pounds now, today, and say, Dad, I'm going to give you 50 pounds, I bet I have to wait to see when she's walking. <laughs> right? Yeah. When, if she has it, she will declare the account and tell me the source of the 50 pounds. <laughs> she will tell me how she got the 50 pounds, right, today. But the point is, if I was the one who said to her that I would give her 50 pounds, she has, she, there's more confidence on her trusting me to give her 50 pounds because she knows I'm working. She knows I'm making money and she knows I'll be able to give the 50 pounds. But the only thing she may not be able to guarantee at that particular point in time is when. Because I have not put a time to the promise. And you see, that's what God has done for us, you know, because if God had told us, you get this miracle at so so day, then We'll just go relax and say, I'm waiting for so so day. But God always holds back the time. You know why? So that we can keep coming back to Him. Keep coming back to Him. Because that is how we build the trust. So, you know what my daughter would do? Like she did when I promised her a certain pounds. She sent a reminder to remind me every morning Daddy owes Amarachi, was it 30 pounds? 30 pounds. And I wake up in the morning, pick my phone. The reminder, that you always imagine. <laughs> and isn't that what we do when we pray? God, yeah. you're owing me 200 pounds. God, you're owing me the 1,000 pounds for the rent this month. He provides it. The next month, when you come, God, the rent. Oh, God, you're owing me the 1,000 pounds for this month. That was pretty much what she did. So here was the moment where Amarachi was not to get the 30 pounds that I promised. But certain circumstances happened and she lost that 30 pounds. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. And to the extent that God now judged, if you read the whole of chapter 14, God was so angry at the unbelief. The belief system he had been creating for me, Abraham. I will take you to the promised land. I'm sure it must have become a national anthem. Beyond the alarm, my daughter was always singing that song to me. You know, there are rare times my daughter will hug me. But whenever she comes to hug me, there is a conversation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So she will come and say, Daddy, uh, 30 pounds. It's a 30 pounds conversation. For some of us, isn't that why we worship him? Tell yourself the truth. You come to God and worship him and dance because he said to you he's going to give you the 1,000 pounds for the rent. And then you are dancing. Is that not it? He said you is telling yourself the truth. But that moment when that 1,000 pounds was supposed to come, 
or the 30 pounds in this instance, God become so angry that he, he told them, you know what guys, I'm so angry, you guys are going to go around this place for 40 years and you will not see the land. It is only your children that will see or enter the land. Am I making sense to you? You will not be able to enter. What is it that you will do that will get God angry? And deny you of that promise that you have been hoping and trusting him for. What he said will take them 11 days. Or what we know will take them 11 days. And so, okay, let me just put additional 10, 20, maybe thereabouts days so that they can, they can be able to mature. And all of a sudden, what will take them less than 50 days to get? They don't have to suffer for 40 years till their energies are spent and they can't still get it. Imagine what, imagine a life you've worked for something and it's only at the death bed that that blessing comes and you can't even partake. Imagine a life that you have worked and while you're working, all of a sudden you are sick and every single money you save are spent on your sickness. Am I making sense to us? Imagine how you have suffered and suffered for your children and laid foundations for them. All of a sudden, somehow, things go haywire and they can no longer become what you have ever dreamt. The dream you had when you had them, born, that dream can't come to life. You know what it was? Be transformed in your mind. By the Holy Spirit, we have a totally different thinking. Now, verse 24 of that chapter 14. Rabbi. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land which he went and his descendants shall possess it. 12. Caleb. Because what he had a totally different spirit. And that different spirit is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the mission of the Holy Spirit is to change our thinking. We cannot do it the way the world does it. We have to do it the way the Holy Spirit. He will tell you to do things that the human mind cannot comprehend. Because he is who? The Holy Spirit. Am I making sense? Yes. And I will wrap up with sharing this testimony. And I just thought, I hardly want to talk about this very personal testimony. But let me just share this particular testimony. And the reason why I'm sharing it is for you to know because I can say so many things the Holy Spirit can do. But I want you to, in listening to this testimony of mine, be able to understand how the Holy Spirit works. So when, as a teenager, I had an infirmity. And all through growing up, getting married, having my children, I struggled with this illness. I, at some point, you know, it really was affecting my, my career, you know, at some point. So you can connect with it. I had to resign um, at an organization all because of this ill health. So let me now show you where the limit of principles. Every best medical doctor in the line of my area of concern in my home country, Nigeria, I met. But to show you that life has limits, principles are limited, not a single one of them can provide me the solution. Am I making sense? Yes. Not one. So, I mean, was it to spend money? Oh yeah, it was. I could spend. Oh, did I get to India? Yes, I did. No solution. 
So this is what happened. Have you been in that moment where you're just so tired because you can't lose your career because of an infirmity? Am I making sense to you? And the images I had or I saw were images that looked like I could end up being immobile. And I really had to fight those images. So the truth is, I went on a retreat for three days. Fasted, prayed. In fact, I couldn't fast because I always would have a painkiller uh, medication. I would take every three hours. You know, every three hours I had to take a painkiller. It was, it was harsh. It was tough. But right there in God's presence, praying for three days, God there must be a solution to this problem. Now, for some people, you come out of that place healed, right? But that's not where I'm going, because that was not my case. My case was that I sat down there and I had a revelation. This is the name of infirmity. I went to Google it. I never knew it existed. No, don't, there was no no prognosis. No doctor gave me that prognosis. No more. So God gave me that prognosis. I googled it. I read about it. I said, really? So for me, when I saw it, I just felt it's done. Then God said, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. I wrote down everything I was told. The first temptation is to come back to your house. And jointly tell your wife, I have a revelation. And my wife said, eh, forget, let's follow what the doctor said. But me, I knew what I had. Everything was accurate. I followed the instruction. And I'm standing. Today. Why am I bringing this? Imagine that thing you're looking up to God for. There is an another spirit approach. To solving that problem. Remember that dream that you have. You want to get to Oxford? You want to get to Cambridge? And all the indicators are not speaking to it. There is another spirit solution. Hallelujah. To it. That dream is to work in the United Nations. And all the indicators are not proving or connecting or making it. But there is another spirit. There is a way out of it that only God can show you. Yeah. The principles are limited, but the divine inspiration of God is unlimited. Yes. So it's not enough for you to say, I have prayed. You have to sit down with God to write it. How can 12 people? Go and inspect a whole land that took them 40 days. And 10 people came and said, Ah, maybe we don't try. Pardon my colloquial. Let's not go. Because the indicators are showing all signs of impossibility. But two men said, With God, all things are possible. So we are not children of impossibility. Yes. We are children of possibilities. Say this after me. All things, all things are, possible. are possible. Say it again. All things, all things are, possible. are possible. Say it again. All things, all things are, possible. are possible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe we have all been blessed. Yes. That was powerful. Father, we thank you for your word. You, Father, we give you all the glory because indeed you have spoken to us. Yeah. And Lord, we pray for spirits like that of Caleb, the spirits like that of Joshua, that it will come upon us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Wherever we may be at a blocked road right now, Father, we pray by your own spirit that you will enable us to look at it 
your own way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Um, offering time. Offering time. Blessing time. Let's rise up. It is time to give to God. If you are working and you believe in paying tithes, this is the time. If you believe in paying offering, this is the time. Let's dip our hands in our pocket. Let's give to God because we love him. Not because of only what we are expecting back. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord now. the glory for giving us the strength to make wealth. Thank you for all that you have given us. Thank you for your provision. Father Lord, we pray that you bless our offering in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you bless our fight in Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, we pray that we shall never lack anything good in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, our Father. We speak blessing of God upon this new week in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, the week shall be a week of joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. The week shall be a week of pleasant surprises in the name of Jesus. Amen. And nothing good shall die in our hands. Amen. Thank you, our Heavenly Savior. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to do better than that. Praise the Lord. A wonderful word we have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For what God has done today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For joy ahead of all this week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. It's good to see every one of us. We are all looking good. Your man, where is the party after the service? <laughs> where are we going? All right. We can break our fasting line is 12. Mm -hmm. Our fasting continues tomorrow and Tuesday. And let's try and come on Tuesday for those who don't come for prayer meetings and pray together. And God will do something new in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Say to yourself, God will do something new for me. God will do something new for me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so it shall be in the name of Jesus. Before we share the grace, let's bless the name of the Lord for today's service. Let's appreciate God. Let's give him praise. Call the name of Jesus. Bless his name. Bless him. Thank him for his spirit. Thank him for his leading. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for today's service. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for anointing. 
Thank you for unity. We bless you. We give you praise. Now speak to the new week. Say, as I go, God, go with me. Go ahead of me. Back me up. Save me. Bless me. Transform me. Heal me. Whatever you want God to do. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. And so it shall be. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Let's go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Say to yourself, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Three powerful. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen. Choir, don't forget I want to sing.